everyone. This summer, we have been learning about the fruits of the Spirit, and I'm going to give you three clues to see if you can guess which fruit we're talking about this week. Clue number one. They can be red, yellow, or green. Hello, everybody. This is Hope Kids. Clue number two. They are juicy and crunchy. Bye! Bye! Clue number three. You take them from trees in the fall. Did you guess an apple? You're right! Good job! Now I wonder how apples will remind us of the fruit of the Spirit. This summer, we have been memorizing Galatians 5, verses 22 through 23. And today we're adding our last fruit of the Spirit. So say it out loud with me. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We did it. Good job, everybody. Hi, Hope Kids. Check out what I have. This is a jar and it says one day. This is all I'm hoping to do today. I'm going to try to put in here. So let's see, what should I hope to do today? Mm, I'm going to bring this. Well, what is that? Oh, yeah, it's an apple, our fruit for this week. And what does it say? Super important. So this represents all the super important things that I hope to do today, like spend time with God, do my chores, help others, and take time to pray. So those are super important things to do today. I'm going to put that here. Ooh, what else do I have? Ah, oh, this box says smaller stuff. Uh, and it's rice, of course, which is pretty small. So the smaller stuff is things that I still want to do today that's important, but maybe not as important like eat a brownie and go play with my friends next door and go and read a book. Those are the smaller stuff. Okay, so let's try this. I'm going to start my day. I'm going to put on all that smaller stuff because I'm really excited about eating a brownie. And I'm also really excited about going to play with my friends because that's super exciting. So getting all that smaller stuff in there. Okay, good. And now I'm going to put the super important things like spending time with God in there. Um, is it really fitting into my jar very well? Uh, not very well. Uh, oh no. Hmm, what does that mean? Oh, let me try this. Hold on. Let's try it all again. Okay, I think I should try this again now that I got everything out of this. So, this is what I hope to do today. And I need to fit both the small stuff and the super important stuff in my jar. How do I do that? Hmm. I tried it first with the small stuff like brownies and playing with my friends, doing that first, and then spending time with God, doing my chores. That didn't work. So maybe I should try putting the super important things in first, like starting my day with a prayer, and then after I take the day with a prayer, then maybe I, um, and I do my chores at home, then maybe I go and play with my friends, and eat that yummy yummy brownie and do all the fun things that I want to do. Let's see how it works. Woo! There was room for both. Woo! It worked. I think it helped that I put the super important things first uh, and then there was still room for the smaller things. Now, to do this every single day, to put the super important things first, I'm going to need to have self-control, which, yep, is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Um, what does it mean? It means being in control of the actions that you do. Choosing the most important things first that line up with, with God, what God wants you to do and the desires He has for your life. Um, that is what self-control is. 
Now our bottom line today is Jesus showed self-control. I can't wait to hear the story about how Jesus does that. He's our ultimate example of showing us how to have self-control. Let's hear Megan tell us our story for this week. Today the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. And I'm going to add an apple to our fruit of the Spirit tree to represent self-control. There are many times in the Bible where we see Jesus use self-control. He puts the desires of his heavenly Father above his own. He is careful with his words and his actions. Our story today, Jesus Before Pilate, is found in all four of the Gospel accounts. Now Jesus has been arrested and brought before Pilate. Let's continue reading our story out of the Spark Bible. Christ the King The priests were mad at Jesus and wanted to get rid of him. What will happen to us if the people follow Jesus, they grumbled. So they made a plan. Let's take Jesus to the governor, Pontius Pilate. He can get rid of Jesus. When Pontius Pilate saw Jesus, he asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus didn't answer. Pilate thought kings ruled over countries and people. Jesus knew that his power was about loving God. Jesus' kingdom was not the same. Pilate was frustrated. Some people wanted to kill Jesus, but Pilate didn't think Jesus had done anything wrong. Pilate didn't want any trouble, so he handed Jesus over to the people. The priest smiled. Soon Jesus would be gone. Jesus knew that he would die, but that wouldn't be the end of the story. Jesus knew God's plan too. Jesus could have told Pilate that the priests had been lying. He could have fought back against their accusations. But Jesus knew that his sacrifice on the cross was part of a rescue plan for all of us. Jesus in our story showed self-control. He remembered what was really important and he put that first. Now, if you wish that you had more self-control, remember our Bible verse from this summer, for the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. So what you're really wishing for is more Jesus. And how do we get more Jesus? We spend time with him. We read our Bibles. We talk with him through prayer. We can listen to worship music or just spend time being with Jesus. And as we get our life from him, we'll start to see these fruits of the spirit show up in our lives. Just like apples grow on an apple tree, we'll start to see self-control on a person who's following Jesus. Let's end with a word of prayer. So go ahead and get out your God hand and your me hand and put them really close together. And let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your words in the Bible. Help us listen and obey your teaching. We want to put the most important stuff first this week. And that starts with you. We love you. Amen. Amen.